Hi, welcome to Mining for More. I'm Dina Merchant and I'm joined by Becca Mowry. And we are right now in a series that we're calling our 52 Hebrew words. And we're working through two words each week as we join you on these lovely podcasts. And so today we're going to jump into two new words. And the first one is Anava. And I was just saying, if you say it fast, you can't mess <laughs> just it up. Say it <laughs> fast and say it confidently. Say it confidently. <laughs> so, uh, Anava actually is the word for humility. Mm. And I really love this word because I know, and maybe many of you are the same way, that sometimes the word humility gets kind of a bad rap. We have this idea that humility means that you're kind of like a doormat. Like you just let everybody walk all over you and you just don't see yourself as really valued or valued. Yeah, humiliation. I think a lot of people think yes. of humiliation. Oh, to be humble, I have to be humiliated. Right, which is like totally two separate words, right? And so I love this because this word, it's the Hebrew word and it is actually, it means to occupy your God-given space in the world. And that is totally different from the idea of humility that is a doormat, right? And so it's like, it's like, don't take up too much space and don't take up too little space, right? I mean, all of us can think about somebody we know that probably takes up too much space. We're like, <laughs> woo, okay, bring it down. <laughs> and then we can think about people who don't take up enough space where mm -hmm. we're like, you have so many gifts and talents and mm -hmm. you're just, you don't see yourself the way that others see you, right? And so I was talking to Beck and I said, what came to my mind today as I was thinking about humility was actually an example in God's word that is mm -hmm. not humility. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we're always looking at like, well, if this word means this and we find it in this part of scripture. So what came to my mind was the Tower of Babel because mm -hmm. I was looking at it and it's right after like Noah and the ark and they're reestablishing like the, the civilization and people are building like their city and they all spoke one language and they had this brilliant idea that we're just going to build this big tower up to heaven and we're going to like make a name for ourselves and we're going to like be famous and to me that is taking up too much space mm -hmm. right it's not taking up our god-given space they and god said I'm sorry, this is a problem. <laughs> this mm -hmm. is, we've got to stop this, right? Because we're not, we're not God. Mm. And so the humility is knowing who we are and being comfortable in our own skin. Yeah. And being able to say, God, how can I take up my space mm. today mm -hmm. in the world? Right. And sometimes that means like, yeah, it means saying you're sorry, or it means like, you know, serving somebody else. But it doesn't always mean that we're just like not thinking of ourselves as, as anything. Cause we're, yeah. we're you know, as I was reading this, easy. Dina, I, I wrote down, I wrote down having the right perspective, mm, having that yes. right perspective of ourselves. And, um, you know, when we have that right perspective of who we are, we are not overly prideful. Like you talked about, like taking up too much space. Cause when we take <sighs> up too much space and we, and we're, prideful basically that's what he means there um i love how he even points out we squeeze other people out yeah. and and you know when we don't have that right perspective of ourselves and we don't have the right perspective of other people we put ourselves in that position where we squeeze them up because we think our opinions are the best we think yeah. our voice is the right one we think our way is the way that everybody should yeah. be doing things and we don't have that right perspective and i and also on the flip side of that when we have the right perspective of ourselves, we can have that confidence in the spirit to step into the gifts that God has given us. I think sometimes, you know, we don't have this right perspective of what God has called us to and who mm -hmm. he's called us to be, how he's called us to serve, how he's called us to love, how he's called us um, to do justice. And when we don't have that right perspective, we can almost become lazy and yeah. we can become, um, you know, lazy Christians and we can become mm -hmm. ineffective. Yeah. for the kingdom of God, because we're yeah. not stepping into the gifting that he's given us. So um, I, I love that, that idea of humility in, in occupying your God given yeah, space. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. It's good. Yeah. And a lot of it is listening, you know, listening mm. to the Lord, listening to each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, that helps us not to take up too much space, mm -hmm. right? Because if we're listening, we're not doing all the talking. We're mm -hmm. not 
putting ourselves first all the time. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I think it's like this lost art, the lost art of, of, of humility is, is something that our world is in desperate need of Yes, and we need to bring it back. And I, I just feel like what I think about is in Philippians where it talks about Christ and how he humbled himself, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He came, he left heaven, Mm -hmm. he humbled himself Mm -hmm. to a servant for us. And so what better example than, than that, right? For us. Oh, absolutely. Which leads us into our next word. Yes. Yes. Our next word, which I absolutely love is Talmud. Mm. Talmud. Again, we'll just say it confidently. Talmud. Talmud. I'm actually doing a study right now where this guy says every word in like, um, he's like this linguist. <laughs> he like does, you know, he like Iraq, we call it Iraq. He's like, yeah, yeah. You know, like he says everything. In there. <laughs> I was like, oh no, oh, he'd probably be thinking we're butchering these words. This? Talmud. Um, and it means disciple. And this is what Christ has called all of us to. And I just I actually like spending time with this. I wrote so many notes in the book, yeah. you know, in these books, like he gives us little I spots know, for notes too. and I'm literally writing all over the page because there was so much that he pulled out of this. And I yeah. just, I just want to actually read um, a little bit of what he wrote about being a disciple. Um, he said, you know, oftentimes we think of being a disciple as we think of being a student, Yeah, a student. And he said, but more accurately, this word refers to an apprentice. Mm. And now catch this. He said, a student learns head knowledge in order to know what the teacher knows. So that's not a bad thing, but that's what a student is. They know what the teacher knows. He says, an apprentice works with the teacher to learn what the teacher does so that they can imitate the teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus has not called us to be Christian students. Mm -mm. And the, the, a big misconception in faith is that we just need to know everything. Now, the, it is important to know yep. the Bible, to be able sure. to recite scripture. It is important to know what God has called us to, but not so that we can just mm. regurgitate information, so that we can do what Christ has called us yeah. to do. He has called us to be disciples, right. to be apprentices, not yeah. just to be students. And you know what? That was profound. Yeah, and we've lost this sense of apprenticeship because back in when our country was founded, back in the 1600s, 1700s, this is what people would do. You, your child would like be about 14 years old, 15 years old, and you would send your child to an apprentice of a shoemaker or a silversmith or something that uh, a craft, right, a trade, and that person would be an, an indentured servant or an apprentice for years, six years, learning that craft from the master mm. and that's we've lost that a little bit because we don't do that we go oh you go to college you learn as a student in a classroom and we've taken that i think and we brought that into our own faith right and thinking like yes. well that's what that's what it looks like right yes. and yet god's like no i want that apprenticeship i want you to be joined to the master and watch what i'm doing right? And learn and then be able to take it and go and do it yourself. And And I think that's why Jesus said, you know, when he was with his disciples, he's like, let me show you what leadership is. Yeah. And he got on his knees and he washed feet and he's showing people that that is the power of serving. You know, when we had the opportunity to serve in the life of the church, when we had the opportunity to serve other people, in our community, in our neighborhoods, in our families, when we're able to walk alongside of people and have compassion to suffer yeah. with people, when we're able to to pray together, offering prayer to people, this is discipleship. Yes. You know, this is, it is not just being students where we can go out and, and, and convert people to believe what we believe. We actually sometimes have gotten that wrong in faith where it's like, we just need to get people to believe. And I'm like, no, that's not what Jesus called us to. He called us to go and make disciples of right. all the nations, not students. Nope. Not students and it's messy. of all the nations. Discipleship is messy. Yes. Yes. And not even it... teachers of all the nations. No. He's no. like, don't just make a bunch of people who know how to teach us kind of stuff. And mm. so we can all adapt the right theology. He said, go and make people. Just 
who are going to do what I came to show you how to do. That is why it's important that we're in the word of God, not just so that we know about Jesus, but so that we can say, Jesus, this is how you lived. This is what you're calling me to do. because You're calling me to apprentice under who you are. And that's why Jesus spent like most of his time. He Mm -hmm. was with those 12 men, the 12 Mm -hmm. disciples. I mean, that was his primary focus Yes, was to, to help those men because they were going to then become the hands and feet mm-hmm. of Jesus mm-hmm. as, as the church grew. Right. Mm-hmm. And that was the mm-hmm. model was what he was showing them was I'm spending my time with you teaching and they yes. were living in every day in, in the, every day with Jesus. Yes. That, that was their, that was life. They were yes. doing life with him. Yeah. They were walking around with him and doing what he did. Yeah. Casting out demons, healing the sick, yeah. loving the the unlovable, feeding the poor, taking yeah. care of the widows and orphans, and preaching the gospel. It yeah. all went hand in hand. And um, this was a big one for me. Like when I read this today, like I got pumped yeah. up. And so I hope that as you're hearing this, that this yeah. like um, convicts you for the sake. I felt so convicted, but like when the Holy Spirit convicts me, I don't feel like shameful. I feel invigorated to go right. out and, and to change my patterns of thinking mm-hmm. and behavior to be more like that of Christ. Yeah. Like I felt, so I hope that that has done that for you guys today as you're, um, as, as you think about this. And I, I yeah. even think like Brian just preached a sermon on being spirit filled. And yeah. then, you know, you could go back and listen to that being spirit filled. And what he meant is being controlled by the spirit, meaning like giving control to say yeah. spirit, Jesus, this is what you've called me to do. I might feel like doing this today, but you have yeah. called me to serve. You have called me to love. You have called me to give. You have called me to sacrifice. You've called me to call me to call me. Like, this is what I will do. I am a yeah. spirit filled person. And what is the production of that? Like, what will we produce? Right. The fruit of the spirit. That's right. And, and people that's how you know. Say, yes. And just like they said of like, was it um, Peter and John when they stood before the yes. Sadducees and they said, surely these people have been with Jesus. Yeah. Because they said, yeah. these are just ordinary fishermen. Yes. How are they like filled with this power and yes. spirit, right? And surely they, they, they have been with Jesus. Would that not be the greatest testament? Like, that's what I want people to say of me. Yes. And, yep. you know, Amen. I want people to be able to say in my funeral, surely this person. Yes was with Jesus. Surely Becca loved Jesus. Surely Becca desired, um, surely she was with Jesus. Like, I want that to be the testimony of my life. Well, that's a great place to end. That's a great place to end. Dina, do you want to pray for us? I would love to. All right, great. Father, we just thank you so much, Lord. We want to be people who are humble, who take Mm -hmm. up our space, the space that you've given us, Lord. Help us to have that right perspective, to listen. And Lord, we want to be disciples. We don't want to be students, Jesus. We don't want to have head knowledge. We want to walk with you. We want to listen and learn and we want to obey. Lord, help us to get out of our own head and be able to really follow you and be your hands and feet. We want to be disciples. We want to be an apprentice. Jesus, come and have your way today and help us to see what you're doing, where you're working and help us to follow you. We love you and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining in, everyone. Join us next week as we go through two more Hebrew words that every Christian should know. Have a great day.